Hello everybody, welcome to this latest episode. I am your host Robbie and this is Robbie's Talking Tees. Tarantula content for tarantula lovers just like yourselves. If you want to be a better tarantula keeper or just admire these amazing animals, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment down below and give this video a huge thumbs up. In today's episode, I am rehousing a juvenile Brachypelma classy into a new enclosure. These are absolutely beautiful spiders, so let's check it out. So here we go, we are starting off this Brachypelma classy video and I'm going to give you a little look at the ones we have in the collection already. We do have two, I am rehousing this one today, but I thought I'd show you both of them as they are a stunning spider. And definitely one that needs a come, I'll say a comeback, but I'll say more captive breeding done in the hobby because you don't see these too often. Now this is the larger of the two. And I think I got this one a little while after from the spider shop from the Mexican shipment that they had come in. So they are both from different bloodlines, which is great. So hopefully one is male and one is female. So let's give you some care and husbandry information on Brachypelma classy. Obviously these guys are a new world terrestrial species of tarantula. And for those new to the hobby, that means here on the abdomen, they have got urticating hairs, which they do flick out when they feel threatened. So be careful when you're rehousing this species because if that gets on your skin or in your eyes or in your nose or your mouth, it can cause really bad irritation. Now also because they are new worlds, they are thought to have less potent venom if you get bitten. But I've found in my experience, these are more likely to bolt and hide rather than stand their ground and throw up threat postures and try to defend themselves. They can be skittish and like I said, they do flick hairs, but please take that with a tiny pinch of salt because as I've found in my experience, every single tarantula is different. They don't all have the same temperament. They don't all act the same but there is a general consensus of what to usually expect. Growth wise, these are really, really slow growers. If you feed them well, they tend to go into pre-molt for a long period of time before molting out. And the size that they put on with each molt isn't massive. So that's another thing to take into account if you are thinking of keeping Brachypelma classy in your collection. Temperature wise, I like to keep my spiders in the tarantula room all at the same temperature, which is 24 degrees during the day and drop it down to 18 degrees at night. They're comfortable in that, they do well in that. So that is how I keep them. I'm not telling you that's the temperatures you should keep yours at, but in that region is perfectly fine. They don't need any extra humidity, humidity or any moisture requirements. They do prefer it more dry. So there's no need to keep moist substrate in here Unless they're slings, we give all slings moist substrate. And we also 
must give them a water dish. Now these two, I took the water dishes out previously because in this one, I wanted to use it in the new enclosure, which it's in there now. And this one, I took it out to clean it out and just haven't put it back in there. Feeding wise, slings, I feed every other day. Small mealworms, small crickets, small dubia roaches. At this size, I feed them still every other day. But once they get a little bit bigger than this, I will start backing it off a little and giving them one large dubia per week. And that's what I like to feed, also feed sub adults. This one's been a little bit more active than this one. Now these do look to me like they are both in pre-malt. Their booty is starting to get black and shiny. So that tells me both of these will probably molt soon and don't need feeding. I probably will try to feed one later on in the video, but don't be freaked out if they don't accept food. That is normally a sign that they are in pre-molt. So now I've said all that, let's get into the rehousing part of this video. So here we go. This is the new enclosure that the Brachypelmacarsi is going into. It's a basic terrestrial setup. It has my own substrate in here, which is cocoa fiber mixed with topsoil and pieces of vermiculite. It's also got a water dish. That is the one that I took out to rinse out. The other one's on the table. It has got a cork bark hide. And I've also added some moss and some leaves in here, some leaf litter, just to give the enclosure a bit of texture. So that's a basic setup for this tarantula. If you're looking to get any Brachypelma species, then this kind of setup is absolutely perfect. So now I've said all that, let's get this one in here. So let's do the rehouse. Now I was toying with the fact of using my catch tube in order to get the tarantula into its new enclosure but I think I'm just going to use the over the top method and just gently guide the spider into the new enclosure so that's what we're going to do now let me just grab some tongs because I'm going to show good practice and taking things out using tongs and not using my hands. I have been aware recently in my recent rehousings that I have been sticking my hands in enclosures a lot and it's not the best practice to be honest. I'm not setting a good example by doing it. So, no, no, if you just come down very gently, that's it. that's it. I don't want the substrate to land on top of you. So please just gently go into the new enclosure so we can get a nice look at you in there. That would be great. Nicely done. And there he or she is in the new enclosure. So let's do a quick recap on Brachypelma classy or classy or class I, however you want to say it. It is a new world terrestrial species of tarantula. It does have urticating hairs. There is no need for any extra humidity requirements. So you don't need to stress about water in the soil or adding any moisture to it just having a water dish and overflow it every so often and these do just fine growth wise very very slow also i forgot to say earlier lifespan females of this species can live anywhere to and beyond 30 years Males have a much shorter life expectancy. I'd say up to seven years, but that is 
that is quite long. I have known males to mature out much, much quicker and live shorter lives. Size-wise, these get to an impressive five or six inches in diagonal leg span, so they are a nice, big, beautiful spider. Feeding-wise, slings and juveniles I feed every other day. Adults and sub-adults I feed once a week. Temperature wise, I keep them at 24 degrees during the day and 18 degrees at night. And these are perfectly happy in that temperature. There's no need to go any higher or even if it goes lower, really don't stress about it too much. Just keep it nice, a nice comfortable heat and these will be just fine. You don't want it arctic conditions inside your tarantula room and you don't want it blazing hot like you're sat in the desert, dehydrating, it's just gonna cause problems. So as long as it's just a nice comfortable 20 to 27 degrees, 20, yeah, 27 is a bit on the higher side, but anywhere in that range and these do just fine. Now, these do like to burrow, so please give them enough substrate to do so. And even if they don't, they're happy to sit out on top. But as long as that need is taken care of, you're going to have a very happy spider. They are gorgeous. This one's absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to leave it there to get settled in, and I'm going to end the video here. So there you have it, another smooth rehousing of an absolutely beautiful species of tarantula. One I believe more efforts need to be done to captive breed them and get them out there more widely distributed amongst you amazing keepers. I'm going to leave them there to get settled in and I'm going to end the video here. But before I do that, I'm going to take the time to remind you guys about the 2000 subscriber giveaway we've got going on the channel. We are so close. Right now we are sitting at 1,996 subscribers. So if we get them few more, I will be doing the live draw at the BTS exhibition in a couple of weeks. And I know what you're thinking. What's the giveaway? So here it is. In the 2000 subscriber giveaway, I'll be giving one of you the chance to win a T Celadonia. And if that's not enough, I'm also throwing in a Ferrophosa Apophysis. All you need to do to be entered into the competition is be subscribed to the channel, go over and watch my Grammar Stola Rosea video, and just type T Celadonia in the comments. Once you've done that, you'll be entered. So good luck to everyone who's entering right now, and also good luck to everyone who's entered so far. Now all that's been said, I'm gonna end the video here. All I have to say is have a great day, have a great week, take care, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.